Hey, it's Kit and Krista, and we're back today with a very special guest, Laz Doyle from TT Games, who made LEGO City Undercover for Wii U. Laz, can you tell us a little bit about your role in making the game? Well, I'm the executive producer for TT Games, so I'm involved in all aspects of the uh, production, so that means managing the dev guys, talking to Nintendo, obviously, liaising with LEGO, doing all, you know, getting involved in marketing, just all, all kinds of things, really. So how long have you guys been working on this game? Uh, well, we started it in 2010, so that was uh, three was years. Long time. It was a it was a pretty long project. Yeah, it's the longest project so far we've made. So this is a proper open world game set in the Lego universe. What was it like making that type of game? Well, it was uh, it was really exciting, but it was also very very challenging. Um, um, you know, if you've got to make a city. Uh, where do you begin? It's just, uh, you know, usually a city is based around, you know, geography, so, but we have to create all the geography as well, so where the hills go, um, where all the, all the mountains go, where the parts of the city goes, you know, the water, you've just got so much, so many different things to think of when you're creating a city, it's, uh, it's a pretty daunting task, but, um, yeah, the team did an amazing job on on designing it, you know, the road layouts, just all these things you have to think of. Um, so it makes sense for the player so they know where they're going and so on. And we played a fair amount of the game so far and we've noticed there's a lot of like recognizable landmarks. I think there's an albatross island in the game which seems yeah. to be inspired by Alcatraz. Is, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about like what kind of landmarks inspired the LEGO City? Yeah, we definitely wanted to include lots of recognisable places in the city when uh, when we were creating it. So we did uh, we um, you know based it on a lot of uh, well-known landmarks in the US. So we've got uh, a San Francisco area with Golden Gate Bridge uh, structure. We've got um, we've got what we call uh, Mount Cashmore, which is like Mount Rushmore, <laughs> awesome. but it's with uh, like Lego minifigure heads that are carved into the stone. Um, we've got uh, like a Times Square area that's uh, colourful. It's got a giant minifigure um, wearing a disco outfit there. Yeah, I think we've um, seen that in one of the, yeah. the opening scenes. We've got, uh, like, like you mentioned, like an Alcatraz, Al Albatross Island. Mm -hmm. We've got a Liberty Island as well. Um, so yeah, it pulls on all, all kinds of different areas uh, in the States. Lego games are always very funny, but this game is super funny. I think to me this is one of the funniest games I've ever played. How do you guys come up with this stuff? Well, we knew we wanted it to be funny from the beginning because all our games have been funny so far and we know that kids um, or, and adults really like <laughs> humour and uh, there are very few funny games around, so it's nice to um, have, be able to create that. Um, the whole team is involved, but there's uh, our scriptwriter called Graham Goring, who um, he just happens to be a designer working at TT Fusion, and uh, in his spare time he does a bit of stand-up comedy. So we asked him if he'd be um, up for writing it, and he did an amazing job. You know, he, there's lots of really funny gags in there and uh, funny characters that um, he really helped bring to life. So there's a ton of really unique characters in LEGO City Undercover, and I think that really adds to the funny elements of the game. Do you have a favorite character? Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was really fun coming up with these new characters. Uh, you know, we wanted them all to be quite recognizable and quite uh, memorable. And so we gave them a lot of a lot of personality. And um, there's a few characters that really stand out. I think I think we did a really nice job with Chase McCain, the main character. He's really uh, He's a really strong lead character, you know, he's not really afraid of anything, you know, he gets he gets stuck in and really gets the job done. Um, there's Frank Honey, who's kind of a lovable idiot. Um, <laughs> he's my favourite one. Yeah, he's... The donuts he's, everywhere. He's, and he's a lot of people's favourites on the team there. And the, the guy who, who voiced him you know, put everything into that role yeah, and really, really amazing. made a big difference. Around so. the office we started calling computers computers now. Computers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, the, and the other one that I really like is um, Ellie. She's the she's the police dispatcher, and she's the one who's always um, giving you video calls and uh, sort of letting you know how you're getting on, what you're doing next, and so on. And with with someone that's in touch with you so often, it was important that um, she wasn't really annoying and sort she's of like nagging. A, and she's a southern belle, right? She, she is, yeah. She's, she's, she is, and she's quite sassy, and uh, you know, she's really uh, she's a great character. Yeah. So with any open world game, getting around is a big part of the action. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the vehicles that are in the game, and do you have a personal favorite? The vehicles, the vehicles are awesome, and, and the guys at, at TT Fusion did an amazing job in designing 
Uh, them, yeah. Half of them are actually from existing Lego play sets, so you'll see things in there you recognise, like a fire engine, and a dump truck, and a cement mixer, and all the police cars and so on. But um, we actually designed 50% of the models as well, so we've got lots of really, really cool sports cars, muscle cars, um, and SUV, SUVs in there as well. We even, we even have a wheelchair, we have, uh, <laughs> we have a skateboard, we have um, a bicycle, mopeds. The variety is, it, it, it's, is, is amazing. Um, I think if I had a favourite, it would be um, one of the police vehicles called a Vigilant, and it's a big 4x4. Um, and um, the surprising thing about it is it's got, not, it's got like a nitrous boost as well. So for this really big, <laughs> chunky car, you can just go boosting through the city, smashing everyone out of the way, and it's really fun to use. There's like some jump ramps too that you can go off of, and they have like a cool like slow motion yeah, cinematic. Stop, yeah, I the camera that. comes out, and then it does slow motion. And... and since this game is exclusively for Wii U, can you tell us a little bit about how the gamepad is integrated into the gameplay? Yeah, we really um, decided to take the gamepad into the game literally. Um, so we created a Lego version of the gamepad, which is given to the player in the game, it's given to Chase. So you can really relate to him when Chase is using the gamepad in the game, you're using it as well. So um, you know, that was really important that we made it integral to the game. Um, and there's four things it's used for. It's a, it's a, com it's a police communicator with four uh, separate, device, uh, separate devices. It's got um, a map, so you can use it to have a look around the city, set waypoints. Uh, it's got all the information that you've, uh, about the collectibles you've got. So all the character tokens you've collected, all the red bricks and everything, you can see how many you've collected on the gamepad. Then it's um, also a communicator, as I mentioned, you get video calls, so you get updates on progress in your story, um, so you get to really connect with the characters that are in the game. Um, it's a scanner, so you actually hold the, uh, hold the gamepad up to the screen and it kind of uh, it displays the game in a wireframe mode where you can see through buildings, through cars, through people even, and uh, find all the different hidden collectibles in the game. And then the last thing is uh, a camera, where you can um, take photos of criminals and use that as evidence against them, or you can take photos of secrets that you find in the city, and then you can upload those to Miiverse so other people can see uh, where those hidden things are, are uh, located, which is uh, really cool. Well, Oz, thanks for joining us today and telling us about LEGO City Undercover for Wii U. Everybody, thanks for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you next time.